Hello, can you hear me? Hello, yes, I can. Hi, uh, very nice to meet you finally. Um, may I ask, uh, to pronounce your name correctly, is it uh, Mordian, Morian? How do you pronounce your name? Mordian, yes. Mordian. Stan, okay, just want to make sure. Cool. Thank you so very much for making time over here. Um, I like to say I'm trying to tell a lot of people what's, you know, this crazy world we've been in with whether you believe or not and and just COVID in general. How have you been personally in your life, um, where you live and the state of things and just how have you been pre, post and still going on through COVID? Oh, I mean, everything is slowly opening up by me. Um, you know, it's not masks are not required if you're vaccinated. Um, shows are coming back, which is awesome, of course. Yeah. Um, yeah, but everything is going well. I have been healthy, luckily, so is my family and friends. So, of course, that's such a blessing. Um, but yeah, everything is slowly getting back to normal, finally. <laughs> yeah, it's my last show was uh, Opeth uh, last March in LA. That was, uh, and I think uh -huh. that was that was during the time when we people thought COVID was a meme. It was something, you know, kind of funny. And then we realized a few weeks later, oh no, this is legit. So it's just things change and, you know, a lot's happened over this past year, you know? Oh yeah. So um, I like to, um, normally when I interview bands, I usually know a lot about them, but in this case, it's a brand introductory for me. So uh, give me a brief um, po uh, history of the Mordian and how you founded the band and just a little bit about it. Okay. Uh, so not exactly a band, it's just me um, as of right now, my solo work. Um, I write all the music, but I do work with a producer who helps me with like the drums and bass and just producing in general, as I don't know how to do that myself. <laughs> um, but yes, I do write all my songs and they are all very personal and emotional special to me and a lot of people so far that have heard my music also feel the same way so that's very heartwarming for me and I'm glad that I can you know through my music and project put out emotionally vulnerable music out there that people can really relate to and hold on to what um growing up what were your um, influencers either maybe a band um, a singer um, a musician, since you, you do all of it, what um, helped, like, when you grew up with, that helped you form what you wanted to write and what you wanted to make for yourself? Um, so I grew up with a lot of oldies music, uh, like a lot of 50s, 60s, 70s. So I love Elvis Presley, Patsy Cline, Johnny Cash, um, like a lot of old, I love old love songs, romantic artists and songs. Uh, so that was a lot of my childhood music, along with country, which is not my favorite genre, but I guess that could also be taken as an influence or what influenced me, uh, the direction that I don't want to go in. <laughs> um, but I've always really been drawn toward a lot of darker themes, music, art, movies. I love Tim Burton. Um, one of my favorite childhood shows was Scooby-Doo. So I was always into that scary <laughs> stuff as a kid. Um, I loved reading like crime novels, horror novels when I was very young. So that definitely, everything I think had an influence, but I am definitely um, drawn towards darker music. And then I got into metal really young too. So metal is like, my life, it's a huge thing for me. Um, but I think a lot of the influence of older music, um, classical music is a huge one too, that really infused the romantic side of the person that I am and what I like to also convey in my music. It's interesting because when you hear Romance in Disguise, your EP, like the old, like album so far you have currently made, there's a lot of influence you can hear. You can hear the vocals are have an a cappella like feel the way some of the intros start before the music and the piano uh, come in. And the lyrics too are, they're darker for sure, but they, they, again, the romance part, they do have this like, like love novelty to it as well. It's a very interesting mix of this dark, this darkness of music, but this kind of like daydreaming in love 
type of lyric vibe, at least I, I, the way I get it. Tell me about um, how this uh, EP got started for you, since this is you know, the very first like full recording release that you have. Uh, tell me the process of what that was like for you. Um, so all the music was written over a span of time um, when I was younger. The newest song, or what I had wrote the most recently, um, was The Feeling I Knew, and that was written while we were already recording the other songs. Um, I started recording the album in like late 2016. Um, and yeah, the recording process, it was a lot of fun. It was my first time doing something that I was like really into. Uh, I had done some different recordings before for just other people for fun. Um, and then like a cover or a few of them, but nothing was like the first time recording my own music that I really, I just love the experience. It was so much fun. Um, but yeah, the recording process went smooth. Um, and then it just, it took a couple years to get everything situated and then just life gets busy. So it didn't come out till May of 2019, but I'm hoping to make up for that now with new material that will hopefully be coming out very soon. So. That, that, that's just, that's really great to hear. And the thing I've noticed too, is that like you said, with where, where the, the song where days feel like years, that the first four songs are the, the intro and then the instrumental, again, it feels like the term that the band is like, that you use, gothic alternative that style of genre but when you get to ninth life it feels more like there's multiple people in there it just feels like a more has more of a black metal more of a full song kind of thing i'm i and that's why i was going to relate to the new song january moon where it almost feels like a continuation of that kind of you have you have the intros the the, the moments the the acapella like parts and then it just kind of went to this whole new song with this like this the menacing riff right before that that scream and hope i was like hoping oh is she gonna growl is she gonna like i didn't hear any i was like i don't know if she ever will or not but you always like when you hear you know when you it's only clean singing and then i hear like something you know distorted vocally like oh what's the next part gonna be like so um i was hoping someday hopefully that'll like that'll be in the rave records if that's what you want to do but tell me about the transition from that song to the newest song because i feel there are some similarities compared to the rest of the material oh yeah um january moon was another gradual kind of thing so i wrote it on my acoustic that first part and then I was demoing it at home. And then I was just like, picked up my electric and started putting the second part in there. So it grew from there. Um, and yeah, at first I wasn't really sure how I felt about it. I was like, eh, I don't think this is gonna work. And then I was just kind of like, fuck it, let's go with it, you know? So, and I think it turned out pretty cool. And I hope that people enjoy the major contrasting themes um, and that's something I really like to represent in my music is, you know, how the duality of things and how things can change in an instant. And that's how life is for me. So I like to definitely convey that in my music. What were those particular changes from the EP to the new songs? I've said before, yeah, there are, a, they've, in, in certain, certain aspects, it feels like two different projects. And it feels like, again, a continuation, a growth musically, too. Um, what were the differences either in how you write your life and just what you see every day within you, within the outside world? What were those changes that help incorporate this, I'd say, new kind of sound for the band, for you? Um, well, I would just say that the EP, Romance in Disguise, I tried to stick to a certain um, sound or keep that like Victorian Gothic theme. So um, it's not that I didn't want to branch out also on the EP, but I didn't feel like it would fit then. Um, so yeah, I have evolved in some ways as a person, but I think I just have a lot of material that I have written. I want to get it out there. 
Um, and it is very different from the EP, but I just haven't had the time to get it out there yet. So I think that there's definitely going to be a lot of surprising things uh, in my new material that will differ greatly from the EP. Um, but I still don't think I'll ever get too far away from that tone just because it's, yeah, it's who I am and I don't want to. I am not um, deliberately trying to do something new or shy away from the sound of the EP. I'm just pretty much creating the sound that I want to hear. How do you write as performing all the vocals, writing all the lyrics and playing all the instruments? How do you write in terms of the way I see it that you're, do you do everything? It's almost in a mirror. It's, it's the musician and it's, and it's the vocalist. How do they, how do you incorporate both the writing of the lyrics and the vocal patterns, the melodies, as well as the music? Uh, is one more important than the other at first that eventually makes that sound or do you treat both just as equally? Um, lyrics are very important to me. I would say more so than the music at first. Um, the songs that I write, it kind of depends. Sometimes the music and the melodies come to me first and then I put lyrics to that. Um, but majority of the time I write the lyrics first or sometimes I kind of have a lyric and melody that pop into my head at the same time. So I'll just be doing whatever. And then I can kind of, I start like singing something uh, to a melody and putting my own lyric in there. And then a lot of times I can build the song off that. Um, and then other times I just have writing sessions where uh, I don't, I can never tell myself like, oh, sit down and write a song because my brain just doesn't work like that. Uh, but sometimes I'll just get inspired to start writing and then I have a pretty much whole song lyrically within, you know, 10, 15 minutes. And I'm like, okay, I like this enough that I could use it. And then it builds off there. Um, so all the songs on the EP, I think most of them uh, were kind of written lyrics and melody at the same time uh, at the piano. And then with January Moon, yeah, lyrics and guitar, the acoustic for the first part, um, that was written at the same time, just sitting down. And then the heavy part was when, yeah, I was saying I demoed it. And then I was like, let me just jam out on my guitar. <laughs> and then I was like, okay, I like this. Um, and then the classical part at the end, um, I just, yeah, I felt like with it going from soft to heavy there and having those two parts, it was not complete. And the message and emotion that I was trying to get through, not only for the song, but for myself, wasn't going to be fully executed unless I had another part or sort of like an outro. So that's where the classical part at the end came from. Um, and yeah, once again, just kind of sitting and making stuff up and then it goes from there. So was that your first time ever, um, recording like, again, like, you know, a growl, a scream, is that the first time you've ever done that on, on, on a record, on a, on a song? Uh, yes, it is. I have tried to do some covers at home for fun but I have to improve my harsh vocals. I don't have much experience. And also I've just been really nervous. Um, I mean, I've, I've always wanted to do harsh vocals ever since I started listening to heavy music, but singing just came more naturally. And I've had an interest in it for a long time now, but I've always just been afraid of potentially damaging my singing voice. And yeah, that would suck, <laughs> you know, I'm going after one thing that doesn't necessarily come naturally to me and sacrifice the other. So I've been being really careful with it, um, watching a lot of YouTube videos, talking to people I know that do it. And so I'm trying to incorporate some more harsh vocals um, in the stuff I'm recording now, but that could change. <laughs> but to answer your question, yes, first time recording harsh vocals on my songs. Hey, yeah, no, I mean, the, it's the scream sounded great. And that's good that you're getting advice and you're doing all the walkthroughs to make sure that if that's something you would like to do, that you're doing it the right way for yourself. So you're, that's the right path to, to learn about it, I think. Yeah. And um, tell me as well about your own musical and um, like uh, vocal journey in terms of uh, 
the instruments that you play and like when do you pick up a certain instrument what um what do you play and then in terms of have you had any training vocally have you do you ever make me to go to choir or is there something you just did self-taught tell me about your own musical journey through your the instruments and your voice so um i started taking piano lessons when i was four and it was something my mom really wanted me to do because she wanted to take when she was young and her parents couldn't afford it at the time so she was like i really want you to pick up an instrument and I remember when I was a kid being like, I don't want to take piano lessons. Like I want to take violin or something else. And I actually didn't really enjoy my piano lessons, but she made me keep doing them. And she's like, you'll thank me later. Uh, and I did. So I'm super glad that I stuck with it because I think it's really been a great foundation for me, not only music theory wise, but just in everything musically. So that's where I really got my start is with the piano. Um, and then I've always just kind of sung. I love performing. Um, I used to, my sister likes to sing too. And so I'd always sing with her in the car. And then uh, I took lessons for a short time when I was probably like seven or eight. Um, they were in the classical, um, I guess, technique. And that definitely helped too. I learned how to sing a lot more like arias and opera style music, which is still really stuck with me to this day. Um, but yeah, I stopped taking lessons for a few years. And then I went back briefly when I was about 12. And then since then I have not taken, but I think vocal lessons are a great way um, just to get a foundation. Breathing is super important and also to get vocal warm ups too. That's a really important thing as a singer. Um, and then, yeah, I started taking guitar when I was younger, kind of same thing with piano. I started taking acoustic and I hated it and I wanted to quit. And I was like, my fingers hurt. <laughs> and then, uh, once I got a little older, I got more into it, but I just kind of stayed self-taught. Um, and yeah, through the years I've taken different instruments. I've tried ukulele, violin, viola, cello. <laughs> but I always come back to the piano uh, and my voice is what I focus on the most. And then guitar is kind of a hobby. So, but yeah, it's been a fun journey. That's being multi, you know, knowing all those instruments and everything that, that just helps musically. And that just helps with this, you just knowing so many different ways to express yourself through, you know, percussion, rhythm, acoustic, electronic distortion. It's, it can only help, you know? Oh yeah. Hell yeah. And um, so tell me about uh, Evan. So initially, if you go to your band cap, it says that there's it's it's Mordian and it has Evan guitar. But then I found out from some information later that he did a guitar solo and helped you do some um, producing. So if that's the case, though, because um, for someone who just looked in the band, it would look by the description, it would look like it would be just it would be two people. But, you know, he's in the, for a different role. Is there a reason that you maybe just wanted to include him because he did so many other things that that you put in terms of like this, the notice or, you know, like the credit or so? Oh, well, I mean, I think give credit where credit is due. And yeah, I definitely wanted to give him credit on the song and without him, I wouldn't have my music. So um, yeah, he, the heavy part of January Moon is both him and uh, oh. mine, our guitar work. Okay. And then so is the third part. So it's like a classical duet. So he's playing one and then I'm playing one. So yeah, I just wanted to absolutely give him credit for his guitar work. And then he did write the uh, guitar solo for Nine Play. I do not have that uh, musical expertise to do that. So. Yeah, no, I meant more the fact that it said guitar, like as in like a full member is in like, I would assume that he played guitar on all, he was the either a guitarist or the only guitarist like with you that's what it meant more of like i thought it'd be more based off that oh he's your second guitar player through all your material that's what it made i was kind of more oh he only did like a few parts when you did the majority of them okay yeah i mean he no he i would say he did the majority of the guitar parts okay. and then he he also did um he performed all the guitars but they were written by both of us for nine life oh okay Okay, no, actually that changes things a little bit. That, no, that's good information. That, that's good to know. How, um, 
what is your relationship uh, with him in terms of how long have you known him? Do you meet him through the metal scene? And what is it like uh, working with him uh, through producing and in terms of writing together? So I met him through a family friend named Bob. Thank you, Bob. Uh, so I struggled with finding a producer and someone to, yeah, help me create my music and record my songs for a long time. Um, I went through a couple different people and just none of them were clicking. No one really got the metal side of things. Like they didn't really listen to metal or just weren't really familiar with the kind of artists I was talking about and sound that I liked. So yeah, a friend of ours was like, oh, I know this really great guitarist. It was actually, I was talking about taking guitar lessons and he was like, I know a great guitarist that can give you lessons. Like contact this dude, Evan. And then uh, I found out he also produced his own music and uh, well, was a full-time producer, had his own metal band. And so I contacted him and we talked over the phone and then, yeah, I went into his studio and it went from there, but I've known him for about um, five years now. Around almost the same time that you started, you said you were starting to write around 2016 or so. Um, well, I wrote the material besides the feeling I knew most of the material for the EP was written beforehand. Oh. Um, just, yeah, throughout the years and kind of compiled together of what would fit best. Um, of course, a couple things got changed. Like I know there was uh, some verses that I changed with the lyrics, just make it better. Um, that's something I do a lot in my writing is kind of, I don't like to sacrifice the creative flow by sitting there and being like, oh, let me make this sound better. I just kind of write whatever my head wants to spit out on the paper and then I'll change it later. Um, so yeah, a few things were changed lyrically in the songs, but most of them were written pre-2016, but I started recording then. Okay. And um, this is uh, important to me as well because, um, and you'll see where I'm when I'm going with this, uh, you're the second uh, female in a, in a metal band I've interviewed. I interviewed previously Larissa from Venom Prison a few years ago, and I would like as many opportunities to interview women in metal as possible because you get a different perspective, a great perspective for one in life for women in general, in sports, politics, news, music, everything. And I like to think, I personally like to think, at least in my experiences, I hope you have the same, where even though the amount of women who come into metal, it still could be, the, the amount of women could be more, but I believe that the good metal heads are very accepting and just, and are, and you know, are just very welcome. And we also know too, that there are plenty of the other part of the metal population where, you know, the woman has to be the keyboardist in the background, or the woman can only be a vocalist and like Nightwish or can do what Tara did or do what Liv Christine did in that kind of category. So this little topic I want to bring up in terms of your experience, uh, you know, singing in a, you know, not, I wouldn't call it not death metal or anything like that in that kind of extreme. So I feel like there's this almost acceptance that oh as long as there's oh as long as the women are singing in like this you know symphonic style that oh it's acceptable consider or anything tell me personally um how you feel about how women are properly and unfortunately not properly placed in metal as they should be and just you know maybe it's just some overall observations and just experiences with you know still just trying to climb up when it shouldn't be an issue at all i mean we're in 2021 it's ridiculous that it is but it is so I just like to hear more of your point of view about that. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, I think it's been a music in general, but especially metal was a male dominated genre and industry for a long time. And luckily that's changing a lot now. Um, but I definitely know what you're saying about the kind of women in metal are most popular as in the symphonic metal genre or that kind of clean style singing. Um, but there are some really great uh, harsh vocalists that are women, you know, Arch Enemy, uh, Ginger, there's Otep, there's so many great ones. Um, Rachel from uh, Sinister as well, early, early days. Well, yeah, I mean, I think that we are definitely in not only the U.S., the whole world especially, we will see significant changes throughout the years that are well-deserved. Um, I cannot say that I've been treated um, unfairly in any way by anyone in metal, just because I'm a woman. Um, 
I, that's I'm very lucky for that because I've heard terrible stories of people who were and I'm so glad that things are you know we're setting a new standard in this industry and I don't think anyone you know I'm all about equality I don't think anyone should be or, or like female fronted metal like why can't it just be metal with the right. awesome female singer you know so I hope that female fronted metal kind of gets <laughs> yeah abolished I know then, you know appreciated as a whole no I totally agree and for years before whenever I would say female fronted it wasn't because oh the standards are you know different between the guys and the girls I it was from a literal standpoint there's only so few compared to the amount of men so it was only more in terms of a, a population slash how many you know one female fronted band compared to 50 male fronted so it was okay. more in terms of just acknowledging that the quality is great when the women are there, but in terms of how many we have, it's not what it should be. But even then, I've, you know, even though my meaning, I believe, was a good intention, I just don't want to say that in general. You know, metal is metal. If, as for me, as long as the woman, whoever, in any position, vocally or instrument-wise, like anyone else in any part of the band, as long as you can do it really well, because as metalheads, we're very used to excellence, elite level of musicianship, writing, structure lyrical concepts atmosphere everything so as long as that person male female non-gender trans does anybody as long as you can do what's needed for the band and for yourself that's that's all i care about and that's what i've always cared about yeah, yeah. people are people i don't think any of that should matter when it comes to art for sure yeah and when i talked to larissa a few years ago and the person straight up said that you know oh, i don't like you because you're you know you're a woman in a death metal band and he threatened he like called names and she almost like hit him well deservedly and everything um in terms of what we what can we do i'm gonna say what can men do better in the metal community to just th you know eliminate those those tendencies to mm, when a woman in a death metal band, uh, then, you know, oh, wait, I got to find out how much they know. Oh, I got to check the, I, they have to go through my checklist to make sure they're adequate for my taste, which is, you know, absurd, but people still do it. What can men do, and regular, but men too, what can they do to just, when they hear or see a woman in a band, I don't know, anything that they can just, you know, just as a woman, what can they do to fix this or what can they do to help broaden their horizon and change their per that negative perspective uh, from a woman's, woman's point of view i would love to know um i mean i think in the whole world in general objectification of women is a huge thing um and i'm a hundred percent about you know your empowerment feeling great um but i think that just from men i've met and know they're like oh yeah i love our enemy she's so hot and it's like, do you really like the music and listen to music? Or is it just because, you know, there's a beautiful woman in it? Like, so I think that's a thing, not only a, or a problem, not only in metal, but just in a society in general. Um, men could be better. Men could step it up. Men can treat us with the same level as respect that they give to not only other men, but um, their mothers, their sisters, you know, think of the people that you love. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not sure if I'm the most experienced person to answer that question. But yeah, I think just really listening to the music and appreciating the music, not just because there's someone you find attractive or beautiful or whatever doing it and doing a kick-ass job with it, <laughs> which is still awesome, but you know, that's how I feel. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it makes sense. That's it's like the rule about, you know, if you only respect women you're attracted to, then you really don't respect women. It kind of goes like, you know, those like lines and those um, the way of thinking as well, just because you though they're beautiful. That could be an asset, but I want to hear how they are vocally and, and how they play. And I'll just give this um, a point. I saw KO Dot a few years ago and there was a local band and the the person who was um, the lead singer and the rhythm guitar player was a woman. And I study music. I play instruments very mediocrely, but I study and listen and try to adapt and, and everything like that. And you can just tell compared to the rest of the band, her parts just here, her parts were very, very minimal, like very just, they didn't make sense. It was almost like they were trying to simplify 
I believe because she was inexperienced. And that could have been anybody else there. It could have been anyone else, but she was she was the front person. So it's just an observation. She's a woman, but happens to not be very experienced at playing. And I felt that in a way, I wish she would have just sang, or because I want to see as you you know as well, great musicianship and dedication to their craft in terms of writing and how you play. And it was just, it didn't make sense. It made the music really uncomfortable when the parts when she would not play and just sing and the lead guitar player and the drum and everyone was playing, it sounded a lot better. So yeah, like it's, it's something that, you know, I can hold accountable to just not great musicianship or someone who hasn't practiced. And that's, I hope an observation that others can look at too. She happened to be a woman. Yes. But the number one thing was she could not play. And she was the she was the rhythm guitar player, like a drummer. If your rhythm guitarist isn't very good and your drummer's not very good, musically you're not going very far. Yeah. And and the rest of the band was really tight. So that's just something that you know on a like last experience for me that I noticed that things you know in that way could be you know we 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 pick each other up and we help each other with you know helpful constructive criticism and and everything like that. Nothing sexist about it. Just be better your instrument because then the rest of the band will be better about it too. Just something, you know? Mm-hmm. And um, moving from that, that um, for January moon, is there any other material that's been, is there a new album coming out soon? Is there things you're still working on or is it more of waiting until, you know, things are getting more uh, less restricted and more normal, but is there a certain timeline that you either want to write new material or you have the material, you just want to put it out for that new record? Yeah, so the latter. Um, I have a good collection of material written. Um, I am wanting to do an album. I have it, you know, all planned out um, already in the process. I'm just not sure when I would want to release it. I think I'll definitely do some singles first of different songs that wouldn't fit on that album. Um, so yeah, there will definitely be new material soon. Uh, there are a couple of collaborations that I cannot talk about yet, but those are going to be really cool. So probably um, I may be releasing another original track, possibly in the next few months. But if not, there will be a collab in October. Okay, that's great. And um, in terms of uh, this new, the new album and everything, it's the same principle pretty much. Evan does the guitars with you, and you record and perform everything else. Same, same principle. Um, I think that's yet to be seen. I may, depending on my uh, my skill level when the time comes, um, I may play more guitars. We'll see. I'm very amateur guitar player <laughs> i got like you know some power chords and like some lead stuff but yeah i'm not uh, accomplished at guitar in any way <laughs> so yeah we'll see um i do kind of like having the the ability to say that yeah i played this on here even if it doesn't sound great <laughs> it's still kind of cool like life documentation for me personally um so yeah i mean everything's kind of still yet to be seen materials written i have demos um but i haven't started the official like recording process yet of everything that's definitely going to be on there um but yeah so everything should be i mean i can't say for sure yet but what i'm planning to do so far I think people that like the EP are still going to like the album, but it is closer in tone and vibe wise to January moon and especially imagery wise. Also too, um, with that album eventually coming out and with next year, I mean, we're only a few months from 2022. I mean, 2020, 2019, it it felt like six months and this felt like, you know, just time is just of I don't even know what time is right now, but hopefully by next year and people get vaccinated, please, everyone, it's not that difficult. It's it's science backing science, just saying that. Um, touring, is that something that has been on your mind? Is that something that you would like to do either for certain performances or do full tours supporting or doing a few headlining tours around the area or even full touring? What would you like to do tour-wise uh, coming up? 
So I think I will definitely be performing some shows with the project that I'm in Dia Morte. But as far as my solo stuff, of course, I would love to perform them. But because the music is so different dynamically, depending on the song, I think that doing a live show is something that I would struggle to create and have it, you know, look cool <laughs> and actually be good because I don't feel comfortable with being like, oh, let me sing two tracks or me and the keyboard for these and then bring a band on stage for a few songs or vice versa. That just doesn't feel right to me. So I feel like unless I could um, tweak the song some way to all be adaptable for a band or the heavy ones to be softer, um, I don't really see shows happening as of yet. Um, unless I have enough heavy material to, yeah, just bring a band on or be okay with not doing a metal show and stick to the softer stuff. So, yeah, it kind of sucks, but we'll see. Personally, it doesn't sound like you would want to do the latter in terms of tweaking these things to where it would take away. I, I could be wrong. It doesn't sound like you really don't really want to do that. And I wouldn't blame you because that would take if you're okay with it, you're okay with it but on the surface it would be taking parts out of the material that you that make you know mortian mortian am right. i wrong in that observation i don't think you really want to do that at least right now yeah that, i do not want to do that okay. so that's why i did play one show uh end of 2019 in joliet illinois um it was fun but it was just me and the track so you know, yeah, it was just me on stage and it was still a good time, but for playing more shows or opening for bands, I don't really think it's the right fit and it would be hard to get booked on a roster that would bring in the kind of people that like my music and the audience that I want to reach while still having my music fit, you know, for the night of the show. So yeah, I think that's just something that is definitely a possibility in the future, depending on the material. And maybe eventually I would just do shows where I don't do any of the softer stuff. But yeah, I exactly. I don't want to compromise the dynamics of my music and who I am as an artist. So it's a complicated thing for sure. Yeah. And I don't think personally the dynamics of the of the music would be like at all um stopped in terms of you go with certain like tour packages because the softer stuff can be for like I think the music overall would fit enough to where you can be on like for example a like Nightwish type of tour. I mean Merker a few years ago to, um, opened for Behemoth, mm -hmm. and her stuff is she you know it's it's not the same level of heaviness or in terms of the same style of music, but the folkiness folkiness of it and her voice it still worked. I I, I was at that show in um in Santa Ana and it was she got a wonderful reception and not just because oh Behemoth's headlining like they really liked her so i don't think i mean the heavier stuff and the lighter things of your material i don't think you would have really struggle i think it could fit with either side of that the heavier side of the black metal or like again the more symphonic style i don't think you really would have a problem personally okay well i'll definitely take that into yeah the Thank you. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a lot of variance in there in terms of, you know, there's so many parts that, again, I believe each part of the audience would be able to gravitate towards to, you know, the, you know, opera classical like singing and then the, you know, the murkiness and the guitar parts and then the heavier keyboards. I, I think it would go well. For sure. Yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah, no, there's a lot of, you know, time and everything in between. But um, also, uh, is there anything going on um, else with you? Like in terms, you said like projects that's gonna be announced like later on. Is uh, is Mordian gonna be the main focus, no matter which way you go, or will there be the other projects will get as much time and um, of Mordian? Um, I mean, my solo work and my original music it's a huge part of my life and who I am. So I think I'm always gonna be focused on that somewhat, but depending on what I'm doing, um, you know, any project that I'm in or I commit to, I'm going to give it a hundred percent. And I'm very like, if I make a commitment, I stick to it. So yeah, I mean, depending on what opportunities arise in the future, 
um, some time may be taken away from my solo work, but I don't see myself um, like retiring from it to be in a band or with a project. So no worries there. But yeah, uh, with Dia Morte, we're hoping to do some shows definitely in 2022, uh, maybe some one-off stuff towards the end of the year, which will be super exciting if we get to do that. But yeah, you will definitely see us in 2022. That's great. We're really looking forward to it. So again, I would like to thank you so much for your time. It's great to get different perspectives, you know, hearing new music and just being enlightened by the different aspects of this beautiful metal tree that we're all a part of. It's it's the best thing ever. Metal is just other genres, like you mentioned about country. I think con good country is really, really hard to come by, really hard to come by. But when it's good, it, it's solid. But and we're open to other genres but metal wise like we just i think we just do everything nearly better than anyone else so i'm really thankful to I, get this opportunity yeah just and we have the evidence to prove it and you know play through instruments recordings and we show you how it's made and what we do so that's something i'm just really proud about and i'm really glad to see there's someone out there dedicated as, as you as well to perform and to give us a glimpse of this new like, atmospheric material. And it's something that will just, you know, drive us to just be welcome to more goth and darkened black metal, whatever you want to call it. But, you know, everyone is different. You know, we heard gothic alternative at first, and then the later stuff, it felt more black metal to me. But again, there's just so many branches. So I'm really glad and thankful we got to talk. Thank you so much for your time. And is there anything you'd like to say uh, to uh, your fans and just anyone uh, looking forward to shows and recording. Any last words? Um, yeah, we're definitely coming back strong in 2022, and I cannot wait to see shows with everyone and just go back to the normal. Um, but I want to thank everybody who's listening, and thank you, of course, for having me on the show and taking your time. So, yeah, thank you so much, man. It means a lot. No, ab absolutely. I'm from Southern California, um, and I have a few friends um, who live right where you are in Illinois who moved. So I'm glad that they get to, you know, see you and get to be around that music as well. So from a metalhead to another metalhead, again, thank you very, very much, and we'll talk soon. Oh yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Bye.